Hi, my name is Elise Chung Sutton, and today I'll be talking about map projections. So we all know our Earth is a sphere, but when you pull out a map to look for directions, you don't pull out a globe, you pull out a flat piece of paper or a flat computer screen. And it's actually quite a difficult task, flattening a sphere object onto a flat surface. So let me give you a visual. Here's my spherical tangerine, and here's the peel unfurled. You can clearly see this is not a nice square or rectangular shape. And this analogy is so common that Dr. Seuss actually uses it in one of his books called There's a Map on My Lap. So you can imagine in order to get this peel into a nice rectangular shape, it needs to be compressed, pulled, stretched. So this is where map projections come in. It's how we decide how Earth's geographic coordinates get converted to a flat Cartesian plane. And this is important because maps with different projections will not properly overlay. It's similar to comparing two different units of measure. You don't compare inches to centimeters because it just doesn't work that way. Also, visual distortions may play a role in the takeaway message of your map image. The more prominent a feature is in your map, the more attention people will pay to it. And that may or may not be the intended message of your map. There are two types of classifications for projections. The first is projected geometry. And in each of these images, you can see the blue shape, and that's called the developable surface. So there's three types, planar, cylindrical, and conic. And we'll take the cylindrical as an example. So here's my sphere, and here's my developable surface. Everywhere that these two surfaces meet, there will be no distortion because that area can be perfectly projected onto the flat plane. However, as you move north and south to the poles, you can imagine that the paper needs to be crumpled in order to fit the sphere better. Or rather, the uh, sphere needs to be stretched in order to fit the flat surface. The second type of classification method is by distortion, and there's four types, shape, area, distance, and direction. And every projection is going to create some distortion because of the method that we just talked about. So it's important to think about the function of your map before choosing a projection. For example, in creating a navigational map, you'd want to choose a projection that preserves distance and direction while allowing for distortion in shape and area because those are less important to the function of your map. So how do projections affect us in real life? This is the Mercator projection. It's the most commonly used uh, projection for global visual maps. If you were to walk into a classroom, uh, the map on the wall would likely be in the Mercator projection. And its issues are so common that it was featured in a West Wing episode, which is hilarious and I've linked to below if you're interested. The Mercator projection is criticized for reinforcing a colonialist perspective because size is sometimes associated with power. And as you can see on the image in the right, Russia, Europe, and North America's size are all inflated. Uh, Greenland is showing to be bigger than South America when in fact it's only one eighth of the size. In the image on the right, uh, you can see the United States size is inflated as it moves away from the equator in the Mercator projection. So here are some projections that preserve area and shape a little bit better than Mercator. Uh, the Gall Peters projection is mentioned in the West Wing and it has also been adopted by some school systems in uh, America. The two projections below keep the orange peel idea in order to preserve area. So in conclusion, hopefully you can see how projections can influence our mental maps of the world and even distort reality. Next time you see a big map where Greenland is bigger than South America, recognize how map projections and possibly distortion plays into your understanding of the map. And as with seeing any new data, think critically about the data sources and how it's being displayed before you derive meaning from the information. Thank you.